Hi, my name is Mary. Today, FM plays the best music in Lambasa. Today, FM rocks. My name is Thomas. I'm here in Nakasi and I like to listen to Today FM because it's rocks. And my name is Milinia. Today FM rocks here in Singatoka. My name is Alkriki and Today FM rocks here in Tawa. My name is Mary Jane. I love listening to Today FM here in Bath. Today FM rocks. My name is Ilay Tiambal and I love listening to Today FM. Today FM rocks here in Osur. Today's hit music on Today FM. In the news tonight, speaker tells MPs respect the arms of state. Lease distribution to personal accounts to be reviewed. And high salaries attract former Fijian nationals. From the studios of FBC Suba, Jackie Spate. The Speaker of Parliament today reminded MPs of the importance of respecting the constitutional arms of the state, the judiciary, legislator and the executive. He says the three arms of state must always be upheld and never jeopardized. Akusita Tale reports he made the remarks after overruling opposition MP Mithie Limbula Nauda's petition seeking Parliament revert the ownership of pine and mahogany plantations back to landowners. The petition submitted by the Honourable Mitieli, Bula Nauda, is out of order. Ratwe Peli Nailatikau made his stand clear that Mitieli Mbula Nauda's petition was an attempt to get Parliament to take action that's not within the power of Parliament. It must be emphasised there are existing written laws that cater for forests as well as pine and mahogany forests and industries. These include the Fiji Pine Act of 1980, Mahogany Industry Development Act of 2010, and Forests Act of 1992. The speaker says these leases are legal instruments which are issued under written law. He adds such matters are to be addressed by the executive and not parliament, and any legal issue arising must be addressed in a court of law. Parliament must not usurp the authority of the executive and the procedures and the authority that is provided under written law. Honorable members, the use of petitions for such a purpose is fundamentally and legally incorrect and is a clear abuse of parliamentary process. The Speaker reiterated that legally binding leases and other instruments issued under a written law must be dealt with in accordance with those leases and instruments, not Parliament. Akusita Tali, FBC News. The Fiji Revenue and Customs Service has today withdrawn the new mandatory declaration of assets policy until further notice. Chief Executive Viswanatha says this is because they feel there is more consultations needed with stakeholders on the matter. The mandatory declaration came into effect after being announced in the 2018-2019 national budget and all businesses and commercial taxpayers were required to declare their assets along with their tax returns. This meant these taxpayers also had to declare any assets paid for by them even if held in any other name. The declaration did not apply for salary and wage earners. Details of bank, insurance policies, financial investments and liabilities were to have been de declared. No confirmation has been given on when the consultations will be held. The Parliament has accepted the committee report on the petition for TLTB to review the distribution of lease to personal accounts and the land rent undertaking on unimproved capital value. Standing Committee on Economic Affairs Chair Vijay Nath says the petition was signed by approximately 446 members of the public across the country. However, Opposition MP Niko Nawaikula says the review done is not good enough and more consultations with landowners is needed. The point here is that we need to review this because the people that matter were not consulted. So there is a need, therefore, for the, uh, for the petition to go ahead to hear their views so that if it is beneficial, if there is a need for it to be brought back to Parliament, then that's another decision. But that is the whole purpose. So totally wrong. We have this discussion, we have seen they brought in a number of issues, completely irrelevant legal issues, pertaining to this issue of equal distribution of lending monies. 
Higher salary is the one thing that attracts our former health professionals residing overseas to return and share their expertise. This was highlighted by Health Minister Dr. Firemi Wangai Nambete while responding to the question in Parliament posed on how the ministry can entice highly qualified healthcare specialists home to help develop international standards in Fiji. Savaira Tambo reports. Mongana Bete spoke at length about the enormous contribution made by former Fijian health professions residing overseas. He said though some of them may be attracted to the salary package, others volunteer. But we also have uh, uh, former Fiji residents that come because of certain programs. For example, the uh, Open Heart uh, team that comes regularly from uh, Sydney uh, that's supported by the Sydney Adventist uh, Hospital. He adds there is a very strong contingent of highly qualified former Fijians all over the world, not only doctors, but also those with expertise in other healthcare areas as well. The minister was asked if any of them were a specialist. The issue that I would like to ask is about uh, eye specialists. Are they also included in your list? Pacific Eye Institute exists uh, because of the Fred Holders Foundation, desire to support uh, uh, ophthalmology or eye training in the Pacific and, and predominantly for Fiji. And that's funded through New Zealand aid. Attracted by the salary, Wangaina Bete informed the House that one of the current subdivisional medical officers left his job in South Africa to take up the opportunity here due to the higher pay. Sabira Tambua, FBC News. The high number of women vendors was never considered by previous governments when building municipal markets. Minister for Women, Children and Poverty Alleviation, Merisani Buniwanga, says more than 70% of market vendors are women, and the introduction of Markets for Change initiative has accommodated most of the needs of these women. Buniwanga says the initiative is also empowering women vendors in terms of leadership skills. She says the initiative has also provided accommodation, training and other projects that meet the needs of women. The project is now looking after 12 market vendors associations around the country compared to six market vendors associations since its inception in 2014. And these market vendor associations, majority of them are headed by women. Uh, women who are articulate in relation to the issues that affect market vendors, both males and females, in the respective municipalities that they represent, and um, are able to bring up these issues to municipal level and even to government level. While responding to a question asked by opposition MP Aseri Randrondro, the Attorney General provided updates to Parliament on the progress of the public-private partnership with Yalaman Chile International PTE Limited. Ayasite Kayum revealed that Yalaman Chile International PTE Limited provides software to most of the banks in Fiji. Kritika Kumar reports. Along with the banks, the Attorney General says Yalaman Chile also looks after the FPOS and ATM machines. So there are different source codes and of course if you have financial institutions that are governed by the APRA rules and governed by our Reserve Bank rules and they have confidence where there's millions and tens of millions or hundreds of millions of dollars involved, if they can use it, obviously we can use it because there's integrity within the system. Said Kayum says there is integrity within the system. So what actually happens, that data and the integrity of the data, that remains with us. The source code, the front end remains with us. So that's how you actually protect it. He adds this has helped Fiji to build capacity. We've been hiring a lot of staff, um, all local staff, to actually build the capacity. As a result of the expertise, we've also had, we've had a savings, and this has been accounted for, $9.5 million over the past five years in respect to the negotiations that have actually been held uh, with the suppliers. He says Yalaman Chile provides ICT knowledge, experience, technical resources, products, support and services to the ICT industry at an affordable price. Kritika Kumar, FBC News. Still to come, court dismisses alleged sedition case. An inaugural job fair launch. Details after the break.
case of opposition MP Moses Imbolitabu and businessman Jagat Karuna Ratne has been dismissed by the Suva Magistrates Court today. Each had faced one count of sedition. The Director of Public Prosecution filed a nolly prosecute and the case was withdrawn and all proceedings against Mbulitavu and Karuna Ratne have been terminated. It was alleged that the two spray-painted words in different places between Nalsori and Suva with the seditious intention of bringing into hatred or contempt or to excite disaffection against the government. The alleged incidents occurred during August 2011. The case of a man facing charges of manslaughter and driving under the influence has been transferred to the Suva High Court. Pia Ratuanga appeared in the Suva Magistrates Court this morning. He was charged after an accident in Nasese early Saturday morning where Ratuanga allegedly lost control of the vehicle causing it to veer off the road and into a creek at Gardner Place. A team from the Tutonga Police Station rescued the driver and a passenger from the partially submerged vehicle. However, the passenger was pronounced dead on arrival at the CWM hospital. In court today, the prosecution requested for the case to be transferred to the High Court since manslaughter is an indictable offence, and the Defence Counsel agreed. However, Vosorongo's request for bail was denied. The court informed him that a bail application was made during the previous hearing and was not granted. He also faces one count of driving with blood alcohol level beyond the legal limit. The country's first ever national job fair will be held from the 24th to the 25th of April at the National Gymnasium in Suva. The event, which was launched in Suva today, is expected to not only offer hundreds of jobs under one roof, but they will also be working to identify clear pathways from education to the career of your choice. Maggie Boyle tells us more. Spearheaded by the Employment Ministry and the Fiji Higher Education Commission, the event is expected to ignite the jobs sector. There are actually 10 priority policy areas on the national employment policy. This job fair is linked directly to policy uh, priority one, which is really providing a pathway for school leavers. The two-day event will also provide a platform for applicants to look at pathways into their choice of career. And while we acknowledge um, that qualifications may not necessarily lead to employment, for us, linking the lack of qualifications. So sometimes people, you know, the lack of a qualification may deter an applicant from applying. Uh, and the Fiji Higher Education, uh, Education Commission is there to facilitate that process for applicants. More than 30 prospective employers have signed up for the initiative. One of the things that we try to use this fair for is a kind of a match between available skills and available career opportunities. So that's why we're participating in this. We have good communication skills, good IT background. Um, we provide the training and the platform for these students that even if you're not the best accounting student, not the best IT student, we have options for you. So from PAC Leader, that's what we have to offer. In addition, the National Job Fair will host training on practical tips to securing employment. Maggie Boyle, FBC News. Magical miracles and modern techniques of magic are what Jadugar Mangal and his son from India will present in Fiji. This is the fourth time the magician has appeared in this country since his first show was in 1985 when he was only 14 years old. Over the last 34 years, he has performed more than 300 magic shows in Fiji. Jadugar Mangal Jr., who is here for his second time, says they will be performing non-stop magical miracles such as Fijians have never seen before. Are having too much uh, disappearing eggs and uh, interchanging and uh, uh, fire magic then uh, disappearing things like uh, Statue of Liberty and uh, also we do car performance but car here is not possible so in another station we will also do that. Uh, most uh, new one is here the bike mystery. Coming up in sports later with Jamie, Raturakuro and Dani Vavana ready for a brutal showdown with Sebastian the Sniper Singh but first Rachel is here with business. Thanks Jackie, good evening and coming up after the break. Real B reps appointed to ministry. And in growing Fiji, new farmers boost sugar industry. Stay with us. Viola, I am Eleanor. For the best classic hits, I only listen to Gold FM here in Singapore. Gold FM, only the classic hits. My name is Senirawa. I love listening to 
Gold FM here in Nosuri. Gold FM, only the classic hits. My name is Dino. I'm from Outrigger, Coral Coast Singer Talker. I love listening to Gold FM, only the classic hits. My name is Salote. I love listening to Gold FM here in Nosuri. Gold FM, only the classic hits. Bula, my name is Marida. Gold FM plays the best classics here in Outrigger Singer Talker. Gold FM, only the classic hits. Leading business tonight, two members of the Real Estate Agents Licensing Board have been officially reappointed by the Industry Ministry. Abdul Hassan has been reappointed for another two years as the board chair, while Hamid Kumar will again be his deputy. The two newly appointed members include Unaisi Drunavesi from the Ministry and Mary Motofanga, who is the Principal Legal Officer from the Office of the Attorney General. And we now join Sinifa from HSC Bank with the latest from the money markets. Australian dollar spiked over 0.6% after Australian economic data crossed the wires and caught traders off guard with better than expected results. Month-on-month -month retail sales came in at 0.8%, beating the 0.3% forecast with the country's trade balance reporting at Australian $4.8 million surplus, beating the $3.7 million forecast and holding the rank of one of the largest one-month surplus in country's history. This follows yesterday's release of the Reserve Bank of Australia interest rate decision that sent the Aussie violently swinging at both ends of the candle before trading lower. The central bank cautioned against slower global growth and domestic weakness in household consumption against the backdrop of the havoc wrecked by the U.S.-China trade conflict. However, recent headlines have revealed the two are making progress. Meanwhile, U.S. dollar was steady against its peers today as the sharp bounce in U.S. bond yields ran out of steam, slowing the dollar's advance in turn. That's all from HFC Bank for now. Vinaka. Thanks, Anifa. Here are today's exchange rates as it was set this morning. The Fiji dollar did well against our major trading partners today, rising against both the Australian and New Zealand dollars, but showed minor declines against the other currencies we cover. As for the commodities market, oil was on the rise today. Crude oil prices approached record highs at $63 per barrel. Gold was also up almost $5 at $1,292 per ounce. And silver closed up at $1,512 per ounce. And in growing Fiji tonight, a young farmer in Ra has decided to venture into sugarcane farming and believes the sugar industry is still a key sector of the economy. Chaperatu says that while he still plants dalo and cassava, he knows that the sugar industry is picking up and will one day be the main agricultural contributor. Philippe Nakaso has more. Thirty-seven-year-old Ratu was one of 29 new farmers in the Western Division who today received a major boost from the Ministry of Sugar. The grant given to Ratu is to assist him in paying his TLTB lease and help him start up his 20-acre sugarcane farm in Ra. I hope to all those farmers out there, uh, new farmers want to join in, I encourage you to step into sugar. Uh, it's more things to be done in Fiji. For the ministry, it's a positive move when younger farmers turn to cane farming. This is my first time and I will be trying out sugarcane farming and I know this will assist my family and I in our daily need. Like uh, my father was also a cane farmer so interest from him coming up to us and all so that's the way. Director Sugar Operations Sanjay Kumar says they will try to continue to attract more young farmers. We encourage new new entrants as a strategy to replace aging farmers and to increase the number of uh, farmers because of declining sugar, declining growers. The government through Ministry of Sugar has initiated this initiative in 2017 by allocating a total of 2 million budget to encourage and assist new farmers to venture into sugarcane farming. Other assistance is also available to farmers who want to grow sugarcane. Philip and I, Castle, FBC News. And that's a wrap on the business desk for tonight. Jamie's up next with sports.
Thanks and good evening in sports tonight. Baber confident Fiji can defend Hong Kong Sevens. And Ratunavula under 19 are hungry for first rugby league title. This and more after the break. Hi, I'm Jyotishma. I'm from Singatoka. I love listening to Mitch FM. Mitch FM is hot. Singatoka Mitch FM is number one. I'm Charlene Robert. Mitch FM rocks in Lambasa. I'm Sona Me. No, sorry, Jackson. Mitch FM is hot. My name is Raymond Dutt. I'm in Baba Singa Line. Mitch FM is hot in Lambasa. I'm Pritika from Jackson. No, sorry. I love listening to Mitch FM here in No, sorry. Mitch FM is hot. Mitch FM is hot. Well, the Fiji Airways Sevens side will be without a number of its senior players for the Hong Kong Sevens this year. Coach Gareth Baber has placed his trust in his squad. He knows it won't be easy, but he believes his team has more than enough in them to pull off another win this weekend. Kuroi Tandulala reports. But how consistent has this Recently named by World Rugby as a player to watch out for in Hong Kong this year, Amin Yasitri Mamba has been praised for his interpersonal skills by coach Gareth Baber. He's, he's learning all the time. I mean, he, you know, when he came in with us, uh, there was some traits in terms of behaviours, and I don't mean bad behaviours, I mean behaviours that, that elevate a player to be able to cope with the level and intensity of game at this level that, 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 to, uh, that he needed to develop. He worked hard on developing them. Uh, we've brought it to his attention as a coaching staff and, and he's working on them. With all teams naming their best players in an effort to stop Fiji from making it five straight in Hong Kong this weekend, Baber says they intend nothing but victory. Um, you know, we've beaten New Zealand when we played them recently and Australia beat us when we played them recently. So we know there's not going to be a lot in this group. Uh, ma the massive part of it is going to be the mental preparation to make sure that, uh, that we're in that spot ready to go and defend this title. And um, I know that last year and the year before, you pointed exactly the same things out to me. So um, uh, I'm confident, I trust my players, and uh, that's exactly the intention is to go out and win this tournament. With full intention to win, the Fiji Sevens might find themselves holding the cup and sprayed with champagne for the fifth year in a row. Kuroi Tantulala, FBC Sports. Former Fiji Airways Sevens star Isake Katunimbao is used to making his opponents look silly at Hong Kong Stadium. But this year he's preparing for a different week as captain of the Fiji Army team that will compete in the Hong Kong Football Club Tens competition. Well, Katunimbao has played in each of Fiji's record-breaking four consecutive Hong Kong Sevens victories. He will be watching from the stands this weekend as his countrymen look to make it five in a row. Katun Imbao has not played for Fiji since the 2018 Hong Kong Sevens. However, he is looking forward to mixing with the famous Fiji fans at the Hong Kong Stadium on the weekend. We have a great history here in Hong Kong uh, since the time, uh, uh, if I can remember, the, the beginning of the Hong Kong Sevens. Uh, Fiji has been part of the Hong Kong Sevens since it began. And uh, we have a good winning uh, streak here in uh, Hong Kong and uh, we've been champions for the last uh, four years in Hong Kong and uh, it's good to be back and uh, we have a lot of history here. Uh, we like, we love Hong Kong, it's like our, uh, our home game. Fiji born New Zealand Sevens winger Chona Nareki who marked his first year with the All Black Sevens yesterday will make his second appearance for the team in Hong Kong this weekend. Known as the Northern Prince, Raturakuru Ndanivavana eagerly awaits his fight in the South Pacific Boxing Program next week in Nandi. The Savu Savu base boxer will take on Sebastian Singh for the Super Welterweight title. Ndanivavana is currently in Suva training with former boxer and G2 boxing stable trainer Marika Yalimaiwai. Militavanga reports. <laughs> All the way from Savu Savu, Raturakuru Ndauni Bavana is making the most of his time, learning from the best. I came a long way, so I won't uh, let my family down. I won't let my spectators down, my fans. So you come in great numbers, I'll give you what you want. I'll give you what you expect me to give. He spent morning and afternoon at the G2 Boxing Club in Rewanga, trying to get all the possibilities before rumbling in the ring. I'm really ready for the challenge. Uh, I know it's a good fight. Good fighter, he's the best in Fiji, but it doesn't uh, 
discourage me from anything. I believe that uh, I'm the best in my division. Donny Vavano, who had just returned from his overseas loss, says he's aware of seeing killer shots, but he will not put his special training to waste next weekend. I went to Australia last month. Um, I got an injury in that fight, but I recover from there and I'm ready for this fight. G2 boxing trainer Marika Yalimaiwai expects a brutal bout next Saturday. The fitters will survive because they, all, they both got uh, skills, basics, ring craft, knowledge of boxing, but the fitters will survive. The boxing program will have 14 bouts before the North Prince meets the sniper at Prince Charles Park. Meli Tavanga, FBC Sports. A new Fiji Secondary Schools Rugby League under-19 champion will be crowned this weekend in Tavua. After eliminating last year's winner RKS in the quarters, Ratu Navula is gunning for their first school's rugby league title when they take on QBS in the final on Saturday. Kore Tandulala reports. Sea Eagles coach Mbaleng Garanivalu says they expect QBS will come out prepared for battle on Saturday. Come out the all guns blazing and uh, they love to defend the tooth. Wherever it is, it's QBS. Um, the name is synonymous with uh, tough. Uh, tough grip and uh, just just playing the hats out to the last whistle and um, we'll do what we can. Uh, so we got a big week ahead of us to uh, prepare and uh, yeah, well, you, know, you know what, we're just looking, for, we just want to have fun. You know, it's all about having fun. The rivalries are there naturally, but just have fun and soak in the moment. So. Appearing in the national grand final for the first time, the Sea Eagles hope to claw a win from league giant QBS. It will be a tough one, tough one for us too, you know. Um, for us uh, boys, you know, we all you know, under 18, but you know, it, it will be a tough one to next week. You know, you know, Presta Lord, then he'll... Whether it's the Ratunavula Eagles or the QBS Knights, for either team, it will be their first secondary school rugby league championship. Correctandulala. FBC Sports. After winning an NRL Premiership and a Rugby League World Cup, Valentine Holmes is having another crack at the NFL. The former Sharks fullback auditioned in front of a large group of scouts in Florida three years after his first attempt alongside former Kiwi star Jason Taumalolo. Manchester United missed a chance to move into third spot in the Premier League after losing to the Wolves this morning. In today's play of the day, Trey Young's clutch shot for the Atlanta Hawks that gave them a 137-135 to win over the Milwaukee Bucks in the NBA. Trailing by one, Young grabbed the ball off a deflection and with 0.5 seconds left in overtime, managed to sink it for the winner. That's it from Sports Tonight. Join Angie later on with weather and in the world of the weird and wonderful, the latest Royals to Instagram. Details coming up. My Navneet Nan, Nambualum Bua Se, Jese, Prenny North, Mashur Hai, Waisi Radio Fiji 2 Bhi, Sabhi Jaga Mashur Hai. Radio Fiji 2, Des Ki Dharkan. Seema Nakasi Se, Mai Radio Fiji 2 Pasan Kati U Sunne Ke Liye, Radio Fiji 2, Des Ki Dharkan. I am Uncle King of Singatoka Town, a taxi driver, they say rugby famous, they say Radio Fiji 2 famous. Radio Fiji 2, the country's country. Tonight's new media is especially for those using Apple devices who love Angry Birds. It's weather time now with Angie. Hello there and welcome to the weather world. I'm so thrilled with all the sunshine around and hope this excites you as well. It's super dry and makes movement so much easier. Now taking a look in the west, really attractive with all the fun things you could ever think about. East winds from Pak Havarasuva, exact scenario here as well, little more humid though. And up north, more sunshine for the northerners, hoping your pickles are already drying. At sea, easterly winds 15 to 20 knots, moderate to rough seas. For the tides, low tide at 11.55 p.m. and high tide at 6.07 a.m. Sunrise at 6.13. For tomorrow, there is high possibility of great weather. 
Tomorrow's temps, all centres will be hitting the lower 30 degree range and will be perfectly dry. And looking further on to Friday, a day is split it into two weather situations. And that's all from the FBC Weather World. Jackie. Thanks so much for that, Angie and Fijian Pulse tonight. We asked, are you happy with the cyclone certification given to schools which have been rebuilt post TC Winston 2016? Yeah, it's uh, protect the sc schools from the cyclones and uh, it's very helpful for all the people. I'm happy this has been introduced because it shows our schools can withstand a Category 5 cyclone. Yes, the government is... Uh, because it won't affect any students' uh, education. Yes, because it is uh, built to withstand cyclones. Yes, because it ensures the safety of uh, people who are taking shelter. In the world of the weird and the wonderful, the Duke and Duchess of Sussex are the newbies on Instagram. Although their announcement broke on the internet last night, they're lagging behind Harry's grandmother, Queen Elizabeth II. Recapping the main stories for tonight, Speaker tells MPs respect the arms of state, lease distribution to personal accounts to be reviewed, and high salaries attract former Fijian nationals. Now for these stories and others, you can tune in daily to our sister radio station, Gold FM, to our poll question segment. This week we're asking, should people stop making hateful and racist comments on social media? Visit our FBC website to answer. Before we go, our shot of the day was taken in Nandi and this sunrise shot was sent in by Keshni. Remember, you can send us newsworthy pictures and videos on email fbcnews at fbc.com.au. FJ Facebook page FBC News. You can also follow and tweet us your news tips at FBC underscore news or simply hashtag FBC News. That was the FBC News for tonight. From the team and I, good night. Bula, never go Malakai Leloma, go in Nakas, on the one wrong and Bula Fib, Nabondo and a Ser. Why I was it say, say Lambasa, and the Teletan of Rome and Bula Fem, Nabondo and Ser. We have a Tumeli, a Puena Town of Hinatoka, Teletakina of Rome and Bula Fem, Nabondo and a Ser. Never go find in a town of Singatoka, get on the Teletakanambula Fem, Nabondo and a Ser. Bula Fem, Nabondo and a Ser.